The 11-2 UCF Knights lead 9-5 UConn at halftime, 33-30. We now know the teams, and for the sixth straight year, our megacast will have you covered from every platform, TV, radio, and digital. So many ways to watch and listen to the biggest game of the year. Coverage of number one Alabama and number two Clemson begins Monday at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific, and every production is also available on the ESPN app. The Knights shooting 61%. They're on a 33-23 roll. We'll be back with more after this from Hartford. And welcome back inside the XL Center in Hartford with the Knights of UCF leading the Huskies of UConn 33-30. to Good to have you with us, everybody. Hope you've enjoyed the broadcast thus far with the coach, Tim Welsh. I'm John Mita Perel. And, Tim, a first half of runs. The UCF Knights started slowly. They were scoreless for four minutes, but then it was a bulge for them. You know, UCF is very, very good. Uh, they put pressure on you on both ends of the floor, and UConn give them a ton of credit coming off that debacle in Tampa the other night. They came out ready to play. Played very hard on the defensive end. Tough offensively to get anything going against UCF's stingy defense, but they did a great job on the glass. They had six offensive rebounds, which really kept them in the game. And then Al Gilbert was special as well. But UCF, they come at you in a lot of ways. They got tremendous balance and a terrific player, B.J. Taylor. He made some things happen. And then Aubrey Dawkins is that wing player who can do things in transition from the perimeter and make things happen defensively. And then Al Gilbert, this is what UConn needs for the big picture. They need him to be another weapon scoring-wise so teams just can't load up on Jalen Adams and put UConn away. And that's what he's done. He's taken his time. He's probed the defense. He's been very, very good off the bounce, and he's made shots from the outside. Gilbert's hits three of their four three-pointers. And first half, 
personified by outstanding shooting by UCF. And how about the rebounds, though, for UConn? That's a surprise. Plus six for the Huskies. Well, they did a good job on the offensive glass, and I think that was an emphasis, emphasis coming into this game. They knew they weren't going to be able to score very easily in the half court against the set defense, so they had to attack the glass, and they're doing a good job with their guards getting in there, getting involved, getting in the mix, and keeping the play alive. So UCF never has won on the road at UConn. And the Huskies coming off a disappointing loss where they held a lead by as many as 13 points at USF on Wednesday night, and then it collapsed in the second half when they were outscored by 16. This lineup that Dan Hurley trotted out, Jalen Adams, Christian Vitale, Gilbert as Adams hits the rack. And Carlton grabs the loose ball rebound. This lineup, the original starting five, 10 and two on the season with this lineup for the Huskies. Kind of a mix up there. Looked like they were going to call a jump ball, and, and that's what they're calling. They're really vociferous for a foul. Was it against B.J. Taylor or Fall? Looked like Peter Uzanis was going to come in and uh, give Dan a little bit of a talking to and maybe a technical foul. He, he came in from the outside and watch him turn to Dan. Maybe he pulled a muscle or something. Let's see what happened. Oh, yeah, that's what happened. And now we have a peace treaty between Hurley Dawkins. what happened. Peter Uzanis may have pulled the muscle, did something to his leg. He's down there in the corner talking to the great UConn trainer, James Doran. And so we may have a two-man crew here for a while. Maybe an ankle situation. That sprained Came up ankle, ankle or ankle, yeah. whatever it is, knee or ankle, may have saved Dan Hurley from a technical foul. He went the wheel on Dan, and, and he looked for his whistle, but then he something happened. And it's, uh, I feel like James is working on his leg down there in the corner. We all know that, think about the players during the season, but the refs, the officials have a, a hard job as well, going from city to city every night. and running up and down this floor with great athletes. Yeah, you have got to be in supreme condition. And maybe, who knows, we talked about condensation on the floor in the first half with the hockey ice underneath. Here's Dawkins and the three by Aubrey Dawkins, who has one of the textbook jump shots in college basketball. I think he's a coach's son. He was taught the right way. Release, follow through, high extension, balance. Also plays good defense as well. Going with a two-man crew now. Gilbert for Polly off the dribble. And it goes out of bounds. UConn ball with a new 30 to shoot. Jalen Adams will inbound. After the UConn loss, Dan Hurley says, we're not getting the loose balls. You think we would have tried harder on Wednesday at USF? It's a sign of a team that's not focused, he said. Maybe a little too cool. Well, he also got the ball stripped right out of their hands. And sometimes it's not about toughness. It's just about decision making, driving into trouble. That's a good rebound. And a foul as would be the second foul against Dawkins. Well, UConn is going to hang around this game. This is what they have to do. They did it in the first half. Just attack that offensive glass. And Tyler Polly is not a guy that normally is in the mix rebounding-wise, but did a good job on that possession, just throwing his body right at the big fella fall. Polly only averages two rebounds per game. He's a 68% shooter from the line.
Polly, the sophomore from Miramar, Florida, by way of the Sagemont School. And the weak side rebound by the 7-6 Taco Fall. Just kept it up high. Everyone was trying to get it. <laughs> he needed a ladder to get there, take it away from him. But good rebound and tough play for UConn, missing both. Colin Smith, who had a quiet first half with a handoff to Dawkins. Ooh. If he gets hot, look out. He just rises up, locks and loads on that dribble handoff offense. And UConn is just a step slow. But they've got to get out and show and get over the top of those screens. Aubrey Dawkins, good start for the second half of the smooth shooter from Durham. We welcome you to Saturday Showcase, presented by Five Hour Energy. It's the American Athletic Conference on ESPN. Taco Fall and the UCF Knights have their largest lead at eight points. And good position on Josh Carlton. And that helps the cause, doesn't it, Tim? Keeping the ball high. They've got so many answers. And they're running this little dribble handoff. Kind of a pin down on the on the weak side, and then Hawkins comes off with his going to his strong hand, and UConn's got to make an adjustment in how they play that. They're trying to trail him, and he's just getting too much space and opportunity. He's so tall and long, he's got great extension. He's got a size advantage on UConn's guards that they got to show out and deny him the ball a little bit better, push him off that sweet spot. Taco's father is 6'10". His mother is 6'1". Now, my guess was dad maybe 5'8", mother... I don't know, 5-4. I was way off. You know, we've seen his development over the years. and He looked at the NBA a couple years ago, and then last year had the torn labrum. And there's UConn with another bad pass. And that's going to go against UCF as B.J. Taylor pleads his case. Now, he's not only a very good offensive player, arguably the best offensive player in the AAC, but a catalyst on defense as well. And he, You've got very fortunate after that bad play. And as Taylor had his head up, he was ready to pitch it over the top, and Dawkins was wide open at the other end. Gilbert for Vital. Huskies backcourt will be difficult for anyone to defend all year in the AAC. Gilbert. It's been that type of day. He's four for four from three-point range. Well, they have to continue to do that. We talked about it in the first half. Just 
change sides of the floor with the ball, get some player movement, some ball movement, and then drive it into the gut, try to get the defense to come, and then kick it out and try to hit shots from the perimeter. That time they did a good job. Gilbert feeling it this afternoon. Colin Smith, the George Washington transfer. Nice back door for Dawkins. Oh, that was special. That is execution at its best. Just on the re readout on the pin down screen, they gave a little bit too much help, and Aubrey Dawkins just read it and released to the rim. It's Dawkins seven and UConn three to start the second half. UCF does not take any possessions off on defense. Everybody's in a stance, communicating, helping, rotating on the pass. Vital. Ball movement's been good for UConn, but UCS defense is so stingy. You have to be patient against them, don't you? You have to be patient. You have to make that extra pass after you draw the defender because once you draw, drive it into the gut, you know you're going you're gonna to see a second and third defender. And here's that little pin down screen. He comes off the top and a great delivery. The big man, Colin Smith, 21 assists on the year coming in. He, can, he has good skill, which really allows UCF to play the 6'11". Smith, believe it or not, he is 6'11". He doesn't look 6'11", standing next to Taco, but to play the two bigs together. Force drive by Allen. It will be UConn ball. Allen in the first half with four points. This is like the old, assists. This is like, excuse me, John. It's like the old days with only two officials. And the problem is there's only two guys to yell at. And so both these guys are going to get an earful for the rest of the afternoon from both coaches. A moment to go, Peter Drusenis left with an injury. So put back by Vital. That will bring them off their feet at the XL Center. Now that's what Dan Hurley had talked about, him being more of a complete player, not just a set-up shooter. And he's a rebounder, a defender, and a guy who can finish at the rim. The runner by Taylor. So a foul against the Knights and some energy in the house. UConn trying to ride some momentum. Christian Vital, who averages 12.6 points. He's the second leading scorer. And he elevates off the miss by Polly for the dunk.
UCF leads UConn 40 to 37 with Tim Welsh. I'm Jami to Perel and Christian Vital, the putback dunk. And he has that type of athleticism. And you know, Danny Hurley said it was a bad performance at USF on Wednesday night, but he is so boisterous and he loves any energy he can get. Well, he understands what they need to do, and he's been through it. He was he went through it at Wagner, he went through it at URI, kind of building the program his way and getting his own players in. But in the meantime, you've got to coach the team that you have. And you know, these kids, he's only recruited basically two of these players. But the other guys are his players, and he's really done a nice job of kind of instilling his will, his effort, his kind of attitude. And so to see what happened the other night in Tampa, he was very, very distraught about that. But that's why he knows that's, that's how they're going to win, playing like Vital did on the last possession. And before the break, a foul was called on Taco Fall, his third. Point of emphasis today, get him in foul trouble. Gilbert tries to direct traffic. Knifing through the lane, running into the 7-6 mountain. And that's that amoeba-like defense by UCF. A version of the pack line that Tony Bennett uses at Virginia as the foul was on Josh Carlton. That's his third. It's 10 eyeballs on the basketball. And if you drive it into trouble when the defense is set, drive it into the teeth of the defense, you have nowhere to go. And that time, Gilbert, he's done a pretty good job, a very good job for most of the afternoon of not doing that, but kind of panicked a little bit at the end of the clock and took it too deep. How do you think the game may change, Tim, with only two officials with the injured Peter Drizenis out of the mix? Uh, these guys are veterans. You know, there's no doubt about it. They can handle it. They, they're, they're schooled on how to do this just in case there is an injury. So really is no factor. Adams baseline. Vital the open three. Somehow when it left his hand, you knew it was going down. Well, that, that's how you kind of has to score. Push the pace. Off a of miss, they really pushed it up the sideline, did a great job before UCF got the defense set to find the open man on the dragon drift. Colin Smith with the answer. But GW transfer in the post with his first bucket of the night. There's the drive and drift, and Adams done it, doing a nice job of penetrating, keeping his head up, and finding Vital in that sweet spot in the opposite corner. Foul on Sidney Wilson, his second. Central Florida has led for 16 and a half minutes. And the three point play for Colin Smith. So he's got a nice, smooth touch from the outside, can make that shot. Also, a good passer. And Good secondary help defender in the middle of the lane. Another complimentary piece added by Johnny Dawkins. Has great anticipa anticipation. Huge upside. Another three by Vital. Offensive rebounds. The Huskies have feasted. They have 12 of them. None for the Knights. That's all about effort, and that's got to... Please, Dan Hurley, there's no doubt about it because that was the number one thing, effort and toughness, but that's a bad decision by Wilson. And a good defensive play by Chad Brown to engulf the loose ball. Fortress-like defense of the Knights. T Taylor to Allen, who's off the line. Cobb the rebound. Sixth leading scorer in the AAC, Jalen Adams, had 25 at Tampa on Wednesday. And an offensive foul called by Byron Jarrett on the Huskies. Uh, on the dribble handoff, Cobb was kind of in a no man's land out there. And I don't like him floating around on the perimeter with his dribble handoffs. He's kind of been a disaster every time they put the ball in his hands out there. And he kind of turns into Taylor and knocks him off balance. That's a foul. That's a good call. You've got to be set. It's the third on Eric Cobb. Cobb, the 6'9 senior from Jacksonville, Florida. He's in the 2K Classic All-Tournament team when he averaged 14 points and 10 rebounds for UConn in November. So they upset Syracuse there. Taylor 
Picks up the dribble and a turnover on P.J. Taylor and the Knights. I'll tell you, John, we've kind of got overboard and, and rightfully so with complimenting UCF's stingy defense. But UConn in its own right today has played very, very good defense. They're really taking UCF out of their stuff and done a good job on Taylor. Hard ball pressure and made them feel uncomfortable. UConn came into the day averaging, giving up 72 points per game. Cobb gets doubled by Taylor and Brown, and Brown is the beneficiary. Quick hands by Taylor. They just don't give him the ball there. There's nowhere to go, and only bad things can happen. You give a post player like that up to the ball where he can't just turn and score. What a release by Dawkins, but he misfired. Another sub for the Huskies as Terrence Smith replaces the hot Christian Vital. That's a good move by Dan Hurley. Just at the above the under 12 timeout, just to give him a little bit of a blow. He has been working overtime chasing B.J. Taylor all over the floor. UConn has a scoring drought of 215. Adams hounded. Dawkins. We won't see that happen much. He, got, he was going so fast, John, that he got caught under the rim. He went to go up to Duncan. He was off balance. And he had elevated too late. He probably should have just taken his time and laid it up. He just glides down the floor. He's one of the best transition players in the country. That might be a sign of the apocalypse. Yeah, he was so fast running without the ball that the pass was just a slightly ahead, and he was off balance. Johnny Dawkins thought he got fouled. So Jalen Adams and the UConn Huskies still trailing UCF. We're back with more after this at the XL Center. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by 5-Hour Energy Shots. Get back to 100%. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by 5-Hour Energy Shots. Get back to 100%. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by 5-Hour Energy Shots. Get back to 100%. The UConn Huskies with junior Christian Vital revitalized in the second half. Tim Welsh. Well, he's played with a lot of energy, and this is what he brings to this team. He, toughness on the defensive end of the floor. He's their leading rebounder, and he can get up and do that. And the ability, when his feet is set, to be a nice lockdown shooter from the perimeter. He's, he's taking the opportunity this year to be coached in a different way where he's not just straight, a straight spot-up shooter. He's kind of mixed and matched and has more balance to his game on offense. And he's continued to play uh, gritty defense. He's really done a good job on B.J. Taylor. 
And after the under 12 timeout, he is on the bench for the first year coach, Dan Hurley. Karen Smith, Gilbert, and Adams the backcourt for the Huskies with Cobb and Wilson in the front court. Gilbert thought about the deep three, gives it up instead for Terrence Smith. And the weak side rebound by Wilson. Chad Brown there to snare it. That's not a good decision by Wilson. Nice effort on the glass, but he just doesn't have the strength to finish in traffic amongst those big, strong forwards of UCF. E.J. Taylor. A loose ball for Al Gilbert with numbers. And the foul on B.J. Taylor. It's the first on the redshirt senior from Orlando. Well, you're wondering where they were going with it. They had a four-on-one, and I'm not sure this was the right decision to give it to Cobb. And they're, they're fortunate there that, like Taylor, couldn't tell from that angle, but they have been not established outside the restricted area. The famous arc. tight here he's outside he's moving a little bit into the offensive player good call by Terry Weimer these officials are doing a very very good job of keeping up with the pace of play that's the one thing if the game gets going fast with two officials you've got to really sprint up the floor to get yourself in position to make those type of calls Eric Cobb makes it a one-point game do you coach any differently with only two officials no no you can't be worried about that but one less guy to bark at. And, uh, both coaches are pretty intense right now. This game has been highly, highly physical and smooth with Aubrey Dawkins coming off that pin down again. What a shooter. Aubrey Dawkins has 16 points. He's 7 of 10 from the floor, 2 of 4 from distance. Counter punches by Central has been a big part of their game today. Three to shoot for the Huskies. Gilbert to Wilson. And the violation. Turnover for UConn. That's typical UCF defense. I mean, UConn did all they could. They moved the ball from side to side. They had good activity with the basketball. But the ball didn't move quickly enough and you've got to be able to break your man down off the dribble and then kick to an open shooter. Once you drive it into the gut, that's when you're going to draw the help. But this is a well-oiled machine on defense. They rarely make a mistake. 38% field goal percentage the last two seasons to lead the NCAA. And UConn is shooting 29% in the second half thus far. And a foul on the Huskies. Savvy Guile from B.J. Taylor. He draws the foul from Al Gilbert. A little old school one-on-one, -on -one and I think that's a charge. Looked like Taylor, looked like first and foremost, Gilbert had le legal guarding position, and Taylor created the contact as he lowered the shoulder. Well, they disagree with you. Foul on Gilbert, his second. What will Dawkins do for an encore? He'll pick up a foul. Well, that time, UConn did a better job of making him put the ball on the deck and didn't give him that shot coming off that dribble handoff, and that little pin down screen. But he just takes what the defense gives him, and he took his time. He's got such. Smooth ability to get into the lane with those long arms and great ball handling ability. Fourth foul on Eric Cobb. The Huskies are not deep, especially in the front court. To well, Yakwe out for the year now, or for a long time with the broken foot. So it's Cobb and Carlton. They also suspended Quentin Williams for a violation of team rules. If you haven't already, make sure to check out the ESPN Plus app today. Thousands of live events, great content at your fingertips, including college basketball, international soccer, and the UFC. Download the ESPN app now or visit ESPN Plus slash com.
You're tech savvy, aren't you? I try to be. Oh, I see you in action. Here's Gilbert with a wild drive. There's Chad Brown. Picks up the rebound. We're doing a better job, you see, of closing the door on Gilbert, but then this man all the way. Taylor. And the rebound by Pauly. It's been up and down. Taylor kind of forced it. Thought he was going to get all the way to the rim, but UConn did a good job not letting him get that clean angle. Deep three by Tao. And here's Taylor trying to slow it down for the Knights. Well, that's the old Christian Vital, kind of this forced shot, not in rhythm, not within the context of their offense. UConn has made six of 16 three-point attempts, four by Gilbert. Deion Griffin, Dawkins, a oh, pretty move. And the fortuitous roll. That is a player. Terrence Smith with a Dawkins-like move. Here comes Griffin against Gilbert in transition. And the finish. Deion Griffin, an N1 attempt. How do you like that? It's the largest lead of the game for UCF. It's the oldest cliche in basketball, bad offense. Leads to easy shots down the other end, and that's what UConn, the last couple possessions, has, has not done a good job in the offensive end. And in that time, they didn't get back at all. And UCF will make you pay because they're very unselfish, and they're determined to get the best shot, whether it's in the half court or in transition. Griffin only averaging three points a game. He's a Louisiana Tech transfer. Colin Smith. I think not only about their defense, that's impressive, but UCF, their unselfish play in the off, on the offensive end. You know, you got a big time score in Taylor and, and Dawkins, but they don't hunt shots. They're very, very good about sharing the basketball. This is the largest lead for the Knights. Punched away, and the pickup by Vitale. A good awareness by Vital, just getting in the mix down there. And that's the way UConn got back in the game in the first half, just grittiness, finding a way to scrap on the boards and get loose balls. And a foul again on the Huskies. That's going to be on Vital, his that's, second. That's a foul. I mean, you can't get into the body of the offensive player. And pretty obvious out on the perimeter. I mean, he just he reaches in, he slaps him right across the arm. I mean, that's an easy call. That brings in a one and one for P.J. Taylor. It did look obvious, didn't it? Well, Terry Weimer is a veteran official. He's not going to just make up calls when he's standing right in front of the play. <laughs> he's, he's, a, he's an excellent official. And, these guys have not skipped a beat, even though they lost a good one to Peter Zanis. Dawkins, 82% free throw shooter. And Polly the rebound. Jalen Adams is just kind of floating around out there on the floor. He's kind of letting B.J. Taylor dictate his offense. He needs to move more without the basketball, be a little bit more aggressive, trying to get the ball to the rim himself. That number jumps out of you, glaring. Jalen Adams has just five points. Five on the shot clock. There's the three. And it goes out of bounds off the Huskies. So Jalen Adams needs to heat up. He averages 17 points a game. But today, it's been slow moving for the senior from Roxburgh.
The UCF Knights off to their best start in eight years at 11 and two, lead nine and five, UConn by eight points. Welcome back to Hartford with Tim Welsh. I'm John Mita Perel. It's been the Aubrey Dawkins show in the second half. He has 13 second half points. He's played 13 games in the last three years. Is there any rust? I don't think so. This man is in rhythm on defense, on offense. He comes off those down screens and he's ready to lock and load. And at six foot six, he is really tough to defend because he plays like a two guard out there on the floor. They put him in good spots and he's in constant movement without the basketball. And uh, and by the way, I think his dad is pretty proud of him right now, but they still got some work to do because UConn is still staying feisty. It's not pretty, but they're still crashing the glass and now they're going to extend the pressure and try to create a turnover. Yeah, as you just saw, a interesting resume and a well-traveled resume for Aubrey Dawkins. At Michigan, top six man, he averaged seven points for the Wolverines, but then he got hurt, and it's never been about why me for him since he came to Central to play for his dad. It's always been about the team. There's no doubt about it. DJ Taylor is a very dangerous player still. He hasn't really exploded, but the big guy down low. And a travel against the 7-6 Taco Fall. Good, de good defense by UConn on that possession. You know, their, their game plan against Taco is obviously they're not trying to defend him with one. And as the ball's in the air, that second defender is going to be there on the catch. And that time the pass wasn't exactly perfect, and Taco kind of brought it down. Ten turnovers for the Knights. UConn has 14, and the Knights have turned that into 18 points. UConn has missed. 10 of their last 11 shots. Adams, Vital, the floater. That was pretty. That was, and that again was caused by Adams dribble driving into the gap, drawing that second and third defender, getting him into the paint and then kicking out to Vital, where he had the opportunity to create some space off the bounce with the floater. Vital with 11 second half points. Oh, the law by Allen to Dawkins. How do you like that? Now well, that's always perfection at its best, that law, but better ball pressure needed on the perimeter. Allen just took his time because nobody was on him out on the outside to throw that perfect pass to Dawkins over the top. Dawkins has tied his season high with 22 points. They always have an answer to him. The Knights keep coming at you. Gilbert has had a dicey second half. A foul against the Huskies. Well, you'll see on the drive into the lane, he draws that second, third defender. They attack the basketball, and then on the closeout, Vital gets him off balance with the nice tough floater over the top. And then better, see, no ball pressure. Al Gilbert's got his hands down at the top, and Terrell Allen, that gives him absolutely perfect vision to throw that easy lob to Aubrey Dawkins. Allen with four assists, 3.3 assist turnover ratio for him. They seem to have all the ingredients to be a contender, not only in the AAC, but also come NCAA tournament time. Well, there's no doubt about it. I mean, they're, they're basically two possessions away from being 13-0. And, and you can see they're, gonna, they're just gelling. They're just starting to get good. And this group is, is older, but they have not played together very much at all. That's a great point. They will play again in eight days against East Carolina. That's an ESPNU game at 4 o'clock. we back home in Orlando to take on the Pirates. Fade away by Vital and the rebound by Fall. No, it's not a terrible shot. I mean, you, you got to just kind of take what they get you. And too many possessions. They waited until right to the very end of the clock. So Vital trying to create something on his own. Fall with his third rebound. He's been quiet with three points and three boards. Two to shoot for B.J. Taylor. I think he had that one eyed from Glassenberry. Well, 
UConn's guards now have kind of taken a step back defensively, especially Al Gilbert there. Not only you don't need to, you need to know where the clock is on offense, you need to know where it is on defense. And that time, Gilbert didn't put any pressure on, knowing that Taylor, I mean, he's got to understand Taylor's going to tee him up and shoot that basketball. He's got to get up on him. And if he goes by him, so be it. But he's got to get up and get closer on the contest. Largest lead of the game for UCF. B.J. Taylor, the preseason AAC Player of the Year. Last year he averaged 15 points. This year he's up to 18 a game. 24 points against Temple on Wednesday in their win. A big game against Georgia Southern. Back on December 11th, he put up 35 points. He has an NBA-type game, doesn't he? Oh, there's no doubt about it. And the thing about him you like is that UConn has really loaded up on him today. They've, they've done a lot of switching. They've attacked him and done a pretty good job on him. But he has not been frustrated. He doesn't force the issue at all. He still has played hard defense. And he's coming at you. You can see he's in great condition. And it looks like UConn's guards are tiring. And UCF's guards are getting stronger by the game as the game goes on. And an offensive foul against Jalen Adams, who has been flummoxed and flustered by this defense that's his second foul and you know dan hurley said before the game to us this is going to be a matchup of jalen adams against bj taylor who has better grit who has better determination who's going to come out on top a good measuring stick game for adams and the loose ball this is ugly here they better be careful the refs got to get involved here a lot of elbows and arms Flailing around and, and Dan Hurley out there to play the intermediate. And good job by both coaches getting out there. I don't think it was anything dirty or ugly. It's just two teams playing hard and got tripped up sometimes when that happens with a loose ball. And Taylor gets fouled, there's no doubt about it. Adams Punched in the face by Adams. Yeah, I mean, it was kind of inadvertent. I don't think he did it on purpose. He was kind of going in for the basketball, and he kind of got him in the head. And nobody likes to get slapped in the face, especially when you're falling down on your on your head. And uh, but this is a time of the game here where you say normally you put your press on, and you try to get back in the game, and you try to get here to watch the play again. And the ball gets loose here. And, Adams just is going for the ball. I don't think there's anything dirty about the play. And Patel just dives in too, and he gets involved in a little bit of this and a little bit of that. Maybe a double technical, but I don't think there's any too much harm there. I would agree. Just That's good hard play. Terry Weimer and Byron Jarrett are contemplating as they take a look at the replay monitor. Inadvertent is the call after our official review. You think that's the right call? Oh, it is. I mean, you, if you could go to the monitor and call a foul, you, they might have called a foul on Adams, but you can't do that. So these guys are doing a good job. This game is, is not easy. Both teams are coming at each other, and UConn, UConn's guards right now, they look, they look a little bit gassed. So let's watch them in these next couple possessions, not only on defense, but can they create something off the bounce offensively? Vital steps out of bounds. The turnover's piling up for UConn. That's their 15th. Huskies in a 236 scoring drought. Were you this amenable to officials during your coaching career? Always, John. You know that. You, you were there a few <laughs> of those nights. But right now, UCF has an opportunity to really put their foot into UConn and bury them because, as Dan Hurley said, sometimes they have that body language where, it, oh, uh oh, it's, it's that time again. We're not going to win this game. And right now, I'm sensing that a little bit from the Huskies. That's right. They go on these lulls, Tim. They've had problems dealing with all year, including against USF late in games. They had that against Villanova as well. And the dominance of the Knights. Trying to win their 12th game and improve to 2-0 in the AAC. It's looking good right now in Hartford.
fans, this is the moment you truly all been waiting for. So the Knights of UCF with a 12 point lead over UConn. And Jalen Adams has been frustrated all day. And BJ Taylor is a large part of that with his feisty defense for the Knights. But Jalen Adams had two points against Manhattan on December 15th and a 15 point UConn win. So that clearly didn't affect them. But five today, uncharacteristic performance, Tim. He needs to get 20 a night with this team. I mean, they don't have enough answers. And, uh, you know, Gilbert kind of carried him in the first half, no doubt. But. Hey, Adams has played hard. It's not just been B.J. Taylor single-handedly. It's been a team defensive effort for UCF. That's why they've held opponents to 38% shooting in the last couple of years. Boy, nothing's easy. They're, they're running their stuff, but UCF is just right there on the catch. They're right in the face of UConn. That's good job by Gilbert creating something off the bounce. To draw the foul against Allen. That's his first. Slippery floor has been problematic all day. Let's hope they figure it out before the NCAA tournament's here in yep. March where you can get a 65-degree day. Well, you used to have that issue maybe at times at the Dunkin' Donuts Center no, in Providence, no? never. I, not on my recollection. I would never say anything bad, negative about the old dunk. <laughs> <laughs> well, with the Providence Bruins playing there, you never know, right? Ah, uh, well, you know, sometimes those things happen. They're hard to... It's all about chemistry, right, John? And right yep. now, UCF's got chemistry, especially on the defensive end. Not only, you know, with their five-man helping the kind of pack line, but they do a great job of just blocking out, too. They just build a wall on the interior, and they're smelling blood right now. Gilbert with his fourth foul. He leads UConn with 16 points. Vital has 13. We talked at the top of the show about front court issues for UConn. They're not getting production up front. Well, they're not going to either. These guys aren't good enough at, to play. You know, they play the non-conference games where they're 200 or worse. They had a bunch of those games, and obviously Carlton did fine against those teams, but against good season big guys in front courts like UCF, UConn has to have a big games from all of their guards. Adams knifing through the defense. And Taylor with the rebound. There's just nothing there. And Jalen Adams doesn't have enough help up front. And UCF is just sending that second and third defender. And he not let him get any clean looks. And he is a master of making tough shots. But the degree of difficulty today has been tremendous. Off the charts. Deion Griffin, who's given the Knights a boost of energy off the bench. That's Vital's third. Yeah. UConn scoring drought, Tim, has hit four minutes and 22 seconds. I really like the way Johnny Dawkins uses his bench, though. He kind of mixes and matches his lineups. He always seems to have two bigs in the game, whether it's Smith and Fall, and then he brings in Brown, and then he ro kind of rotates Burtz and Griffin and De De Jesus amongst the guards. So everybody's kind of fresh. You can see, you know, B.J. Taylor could play another 40 minutes out there. He looks fresh as a flower out there. He's ready to go, and UConn's guards look spent. 27 second-half points for the Knights. They've outscored the Huskies in the second half, 27 to 16. They built their largest lead. Gilbert picks up the foul. That's the fourth on Taco Fall. Taco was trying to back away from the play, and Gilbert created the contact. And not sure that was a foul, but the big fella sometimes gets in the way and gets called for stuff just because he is so big. You know, he's not only hard to defend, he's hard to ref referee. He's hard to officiate. 
because, you know, he's so different out there on the floor. And he had that problem early in his career, as we talked about, when he, you know, he posted up and he went to turn, his elbows would go right into the neck of the defender, and he got called for a lot of offensive fouls and even some flagrants. Yep. He has such a strong base as well. He's not your traditional 7 6 gangly. Yeah, but he's done a good job, and they've done a really good job of coaching him over the years. And Johnny talked about it with us last night, John, just how they've given him a kind of an assignment every year of things. Here, here's what you need to work on in the next three to five months to get better for the next season. And he's taken it to task, and he's been very good and diligent about everything except the free throw shoot. Test of the NBA draft waters, decided to come back. The trap worked out of it by Dawkins and a steal by Jalen Adams. Gilbert, three is off the line, but Adams quick hands for the rebound. Still problematic on the offensive end. UConn's going to play the foul game now. They're going to put Taylor on the line and maybe a little bit too late because they just cannot score in their half court. Jalen Adams just he's getting into the lane, but he just doesn't seem to have that explosion that he normally has. B.J. Taylor, six for ten from the line today. He has 11 points. Tonight, Zion Williamson and the number one Blue Devils take on Clemson at Cameron Indoor. It's the start of conference play for both with the Tigers' last win in Durham coming 24 years ago, almost to the day, on January 4th, 1985. It's 8 Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app. That will be fun. This conference play heats up around the country. Tim, you're going to be at Big 12 land soon as Gilbert drives. Be out there on the private jet to Manhattan and Ames and Lubbock and <laughs> those lovely spots that we. I didn't know you had that type of deal. Grown to love. Is that Air Welsh? That's Air Welsh. That's Air Welsh, yeah. But uh, very surprised. Jalen Adams is, looks as exhausted as he is. And he's worked hard. You know, he's only played about 30 minutes a game this year. He's gone over that today. And nice backdoor by Cobb to Adams for the N1 opportunity. Uh, he should be in shape to play 35 minutes. He played about 38 a game a year ago, but he just looks totally exhausted. Now, that was a good move backdoor, getting all the way to the rim. That nifty pocket pool pass by Eric Cobb. Look forward to hearing your call of the Big 12 this year. How do you see that conference shaping up? Well, obviously, everything, you know, you start the year by saying, who can beat Kansas? And right now, interesting, uh, tonight would be a good game, Kansas and Iowa State. I think Iowa State's pretty good. I like them. I like Oklahoma. They, they battled them pretty hard the other night in Allen Fieldhouse. Obviously, Texas has some talent. Uh, if they get it going, they've already proven that they can play with people they, they beat North Carolina and I'm not sure what's going on here I think Dan Hurley's trying to figure it out as well and people always want to talk about Kansas but I you know, got to the final four last year but Texas Tech was in the final eight Kansas State was in the final eight in yep. elite eight and uh, Texas Tech is, is good again Kansas State's pretty banged up right now, but if they get healthy, they can be a threat. Very competitive. B.J. Taylor gets hounded. Nice pass by Griffin, but Brown couldn't handle it. You know, that's just a bad decision, though, by Griffin. You know, he looked over the top, but there's, they're playing the foul game. There's no reason to throw it to your big guy. Cross-court pass. Just hold it out until they foul you. Now, quick three, and just got to be efficient. They've got the guards in the game to do it. Oops. The travel against the Knights. 
unraveled a bit here in the last minute for yeah. UCF. They kind of relaxed. They kind of took their foot off the pedal a little bit. They just kind of playing, going up and down like it's a summer league game. But that time they were just too tight. They weren't organized against the pressure. They've turned it over 15 times. UConn has turned it over 16 times. That's four turnovers in the last 87 seconds for UCF. You can read the intensity on the face of Dan Hurley. Adams. Good hustle by Vital. And Adams is down on the baseline. It almost looks like John, he's, he's cramped up here in this game. And he's, had a, he's had to chase Taylor, and he's been chased by Taylor and the whole UCF defense. It's just been a tough afternoon. He's played 36 minutes and has eight points, two for 10 from the floor. Chad Brown to the bench for Johnny Dawkins. As they go small, Caesar DeJesus brought back into the game. Taylor gets trapped. Goodness. Allen and a foul. Oh, three fouls on that play. So Terrell Allen will go to the line. That's on Adams, his third. How do you see the season developing for the Huskies? They look like they're going to drop to nine and six. Well, they're going to be feisty at home. There's no doubt about it. And, and somehow they've got to get that mentality on the road that they have to bring. You know, they brought the effort today probably against the best team, if not one of the two best or three best in this league. I think it's Cincinnati, Houston, UCF, and you can flip a coin on any of them. I think all three of those teams are really, really good. So they proved today that they have that attitude to play on this in this building, but in their first true road game, they didn't show up. So how do they bring that attitude to the road? They have to figure a way to close out games. By Tao, pretty move. Oh, that was nifty. Dan Hurley wants a timeout. By Tao's brought the ferociousness in the second half, but it's been in short supply for the rest of the team. Well, going back to your question about UConn, it's got to be all three of those guys. And then Terrence Smith as well can be a, 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 the fourth guard. Uh, Polly has had a nice season so far, an improved shooter. He'll get his opportunities, but against physical, strong defense, you could see, you know, he has to play against Aubrey Dawkins. You know, he's not good enough. He's not ready yet. And the front line guys are not ready either. Uh, Cobb can score against, you know, medium type defenses. He had double double, a couple good double doubles early down at the Garden against Syracuse and Iowa. So it's there for him. You got to try to find it. But in order for all that to happen, it's got to start with Jalen Adams. You know, your best player by far. You've got to be there every every night. You can't come to the arena worrying about if he's going to have a big game or not. You got to just your best player has got to have a big game every night. And that's just the way it is. When you're a senior in college basketball, that's the way it is. It's not an 82-game schedule. Yeah, there's no you know, excuses. You've only got 16 left after tonight. So you've got to just come and say, listen, this, this window is closing, this opportunity for you to have a, a, any type of season, in which really has been a disappointing career for Jalen Adams when you look at the overall what, what's gone on here with him and the team and the program. Numbers are still good, Tim, but it's going to drop today significantly. With eight points, the scoring average will drop. But you saw moments ago, this could be the sixth game where UCF's defense has allowed 60 points or fewer. That is a staggering number. A turnover. Oh, my goodness. Who wants it? Oh, my. B.J. Taylor on the floor. Either these officials are tired or they have a 4 o'clock flight because there's about four fouls on that call. <laughs> they could have called, but they just won't call. There's, watch the fouls here. Boom, boom. Another one. Another right? foul. A tackle. Another foul there on UCF on Allen going to the floor as he put his hands on, the, on Gilbert. 
Where's Randy Edsel, the UConn football coach? <laughs> Recruiting, hopefully, our friend Randy. <laughs> He'll get it going here. Here's Gilbert. And a quick foul. How about the football renaissance for UCF as well? Scott Frost and now Josh Heupel for the Knights. Right. Allen waits at the line. Got to give all the credit in the world to their athletic director, Danny White. Yeah, yeah, the is. son of longtime Duke athletic director Kevin he White. He is a hiring genius, a lot like his dad, and uh, puts good co He understands it starts, you got to have support, which he's given these coaches, but you got to have the right people. And uh, that's what he's done. And it's tough replacing Scott Frost, but he's obviously made the correct hire there. And then Johnny Dawkins is a grand slam at UCF. Two free throws. 12-point lead for the Knights. This will be their first win on the road against the Huskies. And what do you know? They're going to end the game with more outstanding defense and a turnover. As they will walk out of the XL Center with a 12-point win. The hug by Johnny Dawkins and Dan Hurley. UCF is going to be a tough out for anybody to play this year, Tim Welsh. Tough defense, balanced offense, unselfish play, hard nose, veterans, older players, and confident, impressive win today for UCF. The Knights improved to 12 and 2. They drop UConn to 9 and 6. Outstanding performance all around. Coming up next, E60 Pictures Identity, the Dylan McCullough story. For Tim Welsh, I'm John Mita Perel, our producer Russ Winham, our outstanding crew. Have a great weekend, everybody, and good afternoon from Hartford.
UConn, nine assists, 18 turnovers. <sighs> That's the other thing, they're a bad passing team. Very bad, they're sloppy. Yep, 